Hi right, Chelsea fans, Chelsea staffed here on a scorching day. It's so, so hot here. It is ridiculous. So if you can hear any noise, I'm sure you can't. I've got a fan blowing at me. If I don't have a fan blowing at me, I'm going to melt. But this is the first video I've done in a couple of days. I just had a couple of days break just to enjoy the weekend and relax a little bit. And there's been plenty going on from playing Bayern Munich and getting stuffed, from William and Pedro leaving, more transfer news and updates. So I'm going to try and cover it all in this extended video just to talk it through and hopefully you enjoy it. Smash the like button for me, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But as usual, let's get cracking. So first and foremost, let's just talk about the Bayern Munich game and the insane reaction on social media from Toxic Chelsea, which is just ridiculous, really. We lost the first leg 3-0. You know, we went out there with a hope. <laughs> if we could try to do something. And with the players we had missing, I know there are people are obviously going to refer back to when we won the Champions League in their own backyard previously with loads of injuries and suspensions. But what you have to remember is that team from back in the day when Chelsea won the Champions League on that night was full of Champions League um, players that have, have got experience. Um, they were experienced players. They were a team that, that knew how to get the job done. Not saying that this team doesn't, but when it comes to experience and Champions League experience in particular, the worlds apart, absolute worlds apart. And the only thing I'm going to say about the Bayern Munich team, and I put it onto my social media account yesterday, yesterday morning, having woken up and just thinking, taking stock of everything. You look at Bayern's team, look at Barcelona, look at Liverpool in the Premier League, and look at Man City in the Premier League. Each of those four clubs probably only needs to sign one or two players per year to try and freshen the squad up, to, to try and freshen things up. They've got everything else in place what they've built over a period of time, whether it's three, four seasons. And Chelsea are only one year into that. And we all know we need at least six or seven players, not just one or two. And that's the difference. Bayern and those teams are up here. We're still here fighting to get there. And that's what people are failing to see and to understand at the minute. And it's becoming so frustrating because straight away, I don't know if it's if it's people that have only been supporting Chelsea since they started winning things or people that have become used to success. And when they see us fail, bang, they're straight on it and they're criticising. And it's just, it becomes an absolute joke. And there are one or two social, one or two, about five social media accounts out there. And these people have got quite an influence on Twitter with the Chelsea Twitterati and you guys will know who they are and they like to spout record videos of themselves and spout this stuff out there and and just post up they've got hundreds thousands of followers and they influence these people and it's just a joke an absolute joke and that's, that's just the state of Chelsea on social media at the moment so I said it on my post yesterday follow the respected Chelsea accounts on social media the ones you know you can trust forget everybody else but that's it that's it as far as we go we have to remember at the start of the season if we said how far do you want to get Champions League or how how far do you think you can get this season we would have said top six would be great a good run in a cup competition to try and get through the group in the tra in the Champions League would be a great season for Frank in his first year we've gone above and beyond that and people need to remember it yes FA Cup was disappointing. Yes, Bayern Munich was disappointing. There's no denying that. Just we need to see where we are in the process. And we're only at the beginning. And that's what people need to realise. So there was the game. Then there was the situation with Pedro confirming that he's leaving. Fantastic servant, Pedro. He's been brilliant for Chelsea ever since he arrived. He's given us so many great memories, so many fantastic goals. Just in the last couple of seasons, he sort of hasn't been sort of featuring as much as he used to. And I just think that it sort of got to a point where for both parties, it sort of worked out really. And we wish Pedro all the best over in at Roma and obviously recovering from his shoulder. But it was nice to see Pedro put a message up 
to Chelsea fans and Chelsea do the same to Pedro. So that was Pedro. And then obviously William and this will he sign, won't he sign, has now been confirmed yesterday when he penned a message to Chelsea fans. What can you say about William? Now, there's a lot of people, again, these people that have only appeared the last couple of, couple of seasons that are now Chelsea influencers on social media that have been lambasting William, been calling him out, been slagging him off. And it's ridiculous because this guy over seven years has given everything to Chelsea. And a few years back, when Chelsea were awful, we were heading for a mid-table finish and everywhere around the squad there were people underperforming below par which led to the position we were in there was one person in that squad and in that team that stood up and tried to fight for better and that was William so as far as William's concerned with me I think I'll be forever grateful for William for his effort his influence his achievements his goals the memories we got the song for him and he loves it and you see him at the end of the season when we won the league the last time under Conte dancing he knew exactly what the song was given all this to the Tottenham fan Premier League champions back in the day and that fateful night for Tottenham when we got a 2-2 draw and Leicester won the Premier League William has been outstanding for Chelsea and he should be remembered as such even if he is going to Arsenal doesn't matter he's got the, the contracts that he wanted he wanted a three-year deal and the thing is you have to remember Chelsea would only give a one-year rolling contract to over 30 year olds and that was up until I think last season maybe the season before where they changed it to two so what he was asking for was a big big ask to get Chelsea to change their philosophy it was never going to happen and unfortunately we lost him so he's expected to sign for Arsenal good luck to him but he's been brilliant for Chelsea and people need to remember that now we've got the situation with transfers and as I'm seeing these sort of stories on my screen in front of me and things are popping into my head, let's look at Juve and Maurizio Sarri. He won the title, fell at the, at the quarterfinal stage with us, and he got sacked at Juve. Now, he's had Chelsea's job for a season, sacked. Juve's job for a season, sacked. Surely that tells you something. One dimensional style doesn't work. It worked for Napoli doesn't work for anywhere else and what does that now mean for Jorginho will Jorginho now be stuck at Chelsea or has he done well enough in the games towards the end of the season to prove to Frank Lampard he could still be a good asset for us next season I just wonder now the, ho the whole situation has changed and there's reports that Juve are no longer interested in Jorginho I wonder we can probably see Jorginho at Chelsea next year. And is that something you'll be happy with? And to another midfielder, to you, me, Bakayoko. Now, we know that he's trying to force a move away. And AC Milan, Seville, Monaco are all interested. It's believed that he's trying to favour the move to AC Milan. And he's willing to take a half salary pay cut to take his wages from 140000 reported, I should say, £140,000 a week down to 70000 a week to go from Chelsea. I think it'll be done and I think he'll go. But that's quite interesting that someone that just purely doesn't see his, his future here at all, which is, I think both parties will agree on that, but to take a half salary pay cut, that's interesting. Another midfielder slash defender is making headlines today and that's Efren Ampadu with reports that Chelsea could send him on loan to Fulham, newly promoted to the Premier League next season, to gain a season of experience in the Premier League. How do you feel about that? Do you think Ampadu's already ready? Or would a full season in the Premier League be better for him? Look at what we did with Loftus-Cheek, for example. Would that be something that's of interest and something that Chelsea should pursue? Bearing in mind, we're still looking for defensive reinforcements this summer so talking to about defensive reinforcements there's all sorts of names that have appeared over the weekend being linked with Chelsea I'm seeing a report out there that's saying that Roman Abramovich is prepared to bankroll more moves for Frank Lampard as Frank has called for more investment to to try and close the gap and there's reports that he, despite Chelsea spending already 80 million he could bankroll another 200 odd million 
on the likes of Oblak, Chilwell and Declan Rice. Are we going to get all three for that amount of money? I can't see it happening. And there's an interesting article saying that Jan Oblak is 100 million release fee. Leicester's not going to let Chilwell go into the, to around 60 million. 160 million where they're saying you could go to Ajax and sign Andre Anana or Nicholas Tagliafico for more than half that. So you're looking at around 60 million for those two. Is that something Chelsea should be doing? What do you guys think about anything I'm talking about? Post your comments in the comments section and we're going to move on. So, Declan Rice. Now, there's reports West Ham and David Moyes at a meeting. And David Moyes has been told he must sell to finance purchases so he needs to sell his best players or and one of his best players to bring in money so he can reinvest look at Declan Rice if they sell him for 60 million they can get two decent players in for 30 million each you see the thought process of West Ham's board is that amount of money something that Chelsea should sanction and will Frank Lampard give that sort of money the go-ahead so what's been interesting over the course of the weekend was the fact that Apparently, John Stones, the ex-Everton, Oldham, Everton, and now Man City centre-back, could be available at City for just £20 million, having fallen down the pecking order, bearing in mind they've just signed Nathan Aki for £41 million. John Stones was signed for £50 million by Man City, and it was a time when Chelsea were reportedly interested in the in for him as well, and he chose City over Chelsea. They're saying we could get him for £20 million now. Is John Stones the answer? Now, I was talking to one of my family members about John Stones. And for me, I don't think, as a defender, I don't think he's all that good. I don't, he's not the type of defender that's going to go, you know, like a Zuma type. He's not physical enough. He's not going to, gonna, you know, impose himself on players. He's more of a ball-playing defender. And do we need those sort of defenders at the club? Or do we need more people, for me, like Zuma, Tomori? If you put somebody next to him, plays... Stones next to Azuma. Look at the example I was given is Terry Carvalho, for example. Terry was the one that would go and challenge and step forward and make that challenge. And Carvalho was clued up around here, even though Carvalho was physical, as we all know. But he knew he could get round on the cover. He, those two played so well together in tandem, like Terry and Gallas back in the day. So could John Stones be that sort of a player? to play more of a covering role and a more of an intelligent role than, than what we've already got. But 20 million, is that a steal? At least that's someone, a deal we should be taking up. I wonder. But there are reports that Chelsea could sell Antonio Rudiger this summer. Now, I personally think that out of the four centre-backs that we've got, Zuma, Tomori have got to stay. Now, that's massive. That's absolutely massive because at the beginning of last season, or the season just finished, when we looked at our Chelsea team and said, right, who's going to start? All day long, it, we, every single one would have said Christensen and Rudiger. Look how much that's changed, and Tomori's not even played. But when Zuma and Tomori played, the beginning of the season, for that period where we went on an unbeaten run, the two of them in tandem were really, really good, and they contributed massively to that run. Those two, for me, should be given the chance. Hopefully, Tomori stays. If people have got to go, it's got to be Rudiger and Christensen, or one of the two. I did think it would be Christensen, but I'm now sort of swaying towards Rudiger, because let's face it, Germany International returning to Germany for the Bayern Munich game. He was put in front of the press to do his press conference ahead. Left on the bench. Massive from Frank. Is that a sign? I wonder. Then there's more reports talking about Kai Havertz and the deal being done. Five-year deal has been agreed with the player, but Chelsea and Bayer Leverkusen are worlds apart. They have come out and said there will be no COVID-19 discount. They want the 90 million, and I, I'm wondering if Chelsea will pay that or if they'll try and do some sort of um, payment over a period of a, a number of seasons, maybe. Payment over three years, Maybe 50 up front and then 20 and then 20 in the following seasons. I wonder if something can be agreed. But Bayer Leverkusen are not going to take anything less than that. And that's huge. 
So that's it from me guys, Monday the 10th of August. If you've enjoyed the video, smash the like button for me, then subscribe to the channel, but make sure you hit the bell for notifications. If you don't miss my videos come out, which is pretty much most days of the week. As I say, I had a, a weekend off. Enjoy the weather. We'll be like this for a couple of days if you're in the UK and depending on where you are, but there'll be thunderstorms coming. Have a great Monday night. See you all tomorrow.